Today's Tuesday tidbits, we're going to be talking about scheduled jewelry on a homeowner's policy. I hope you enjoy. When it comes to jewelry on, on a homeowner's policy, sometimes it can be confusing as it relates to theft because there are limitations on your unscheduled personal property portion of the homeowners. So your unscheduled personal property is that lump sum amount where the homeowner's policy is telling you you've got some percentage of the amount you have on your dwelling that covers unscheduled personal property. So your stuff, your dishes, your pots, your pans, your furniture, but it also has an internal limit for jewelry. And typically fairly standard on the jewelry limitation is for theft of jewelry, it's gonna have a limit of somewhere typically between $1,000 and $2,500, which means if you call to file a claim and say I was broken into and you don't have jewelry scheduled on your policy, you say all my jewelry was stolen, the most that policy will pay is whatever that maximum limit for theft of jewelry is, $1,500, dollars $2,500. The way you alleviate that is you schedule your jewelry on the policy. So when you schedule it, you're putting a particular value on the policy. Sometimes it requires an appraisal, but once it's scheduled, it no longer falls under that unscheduled personal property limitation. But then, even when you get into scheduled jewelry, you have different companies that are going to treat them in different manner, manners. You have what's called agreed value, and then you have stated value. Stated value is the most common way to schedule jewelry, and what it does is you're establishing a stated amount of coverage that's the maximum that the policy would pay. However, if the item could be replaced, if it was damaged and it could be replaced, or if the insurance company has access to a jeweler, they can access uh, a, a stone of like uh, uh, quality and, and likeness. That's not the exact term I need to use, but it's basically the same thing and do it at a lesser value than the stated amount. Then the policy says that's what they'll do. If you're dealing with an agreed value contract, where your homeowner's policy for scheduled jewelry says it's an agreed value, then the policy it typically is going to pay whatever the amount of coverage that was agreed on. So if y'all determine that the ring was, a, if it's a ring, watch, whatever, that it was a $10,000 item and that's the amount of coverage you've got, that's what's going to be paid. They're not going to get involved in, well, yeah, but we can replace it or repair it for a lesser cost. So you start out with very basic limited coverage for jewelry, for theft. Let me back up and say theft of jewelry on, on the unscheduled side of a homeowner's policy. But just know if you have items that are of greater value than that, you can schedule them. When you get into the scheduled jewelry, then you want to know, are we dealing with a stated value or are we dealing with an agreed value? And that's going to depend on carrier. And in some case, the carriers will offer both. You can choose whether you want agreed or stated, but most times they'll have one or the other, and you just want to have uh, an understanding basically of how that works if you find yourself in that position where you are calling and filing a claim, and you have an understanding of how those things are going to uh, bear out so that you're not ultimately disappointed. If you have any questions about your insurance, homeowners, any of those kind of things, automobiles, scheduled jewelry, whatever, feel free to give us a call here at Wellside Advisors and Insurance Services. Talk to me or Terry. We'll be glad to have a conversation with you. Hope you have a great week.